Harley Shabala, it's always a pleasure to have you on the Native News Update. You're going to give us a little bit of an update from Window Rock, Arizona. The last issue you were talking about when we left in the last conversation was a water rights bill that was passed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And we'll get on to some of the other things that are going on for the Navajo Nation in that region. Well, the um, water settlement was a huge settlement because it deals with the water rights that are on the Arizona portion of the Navajo Reservation. And most of Navajo is in northern Navajo, I mean northern Arizona. And then you have a small part that's in New Mexico. And so this water rights settlement um, settles um, also a lawsuit involving the Hopi tribe over the Navajo Aquifer, which is um, in the area around the Peabody coal mining area. And then also had a lawsuit that the Navajo Nation had filed against the U.S. Department of Interior for not protecting its water rights years ago when um, the states got together and decided to start... um, negotiating each other's water rights so it's it's pretty huge and um actually today is a day that everyone is waiting to see what president shirley will do because it's in front of him as soon as it was approved it went to him for i for his um signing off of it signing off of it um not saying that it's law but you know saying okay you know he had no problem with it or he could veto it and so today is the day. And on Tuesday, he met with a group of community members who are very concerned about um, this settlement. They feel that it's not in the best interest of the tribe. And, and water rights are, are very, very difficult, very difficult to understand. Um, and and I, it took me a long time to write that story. I was doing a lot of researching and reading and calling some attorney friends of mine to explain this doctrine okay you're trying to explain uh, the the whole settlement and everything is that something that if he vetoes can it go back to referendum or is it is it going to go to referendum of the people to settle to or is that going to be uh, if he vetoes it goes back to the council again if he vetoes it it goes back to the council for their override and one of the recommendations that was made that came from the Navajo Nation Human Rights Commission was that it go to the people for their vote and through a referendum. Okay. But um, the council decided not to go that route, and they approved it. It's now before President Shirley, and today is the deadline for him to take action on it. Or he could decide not to take any action, and then what happens is it just, you know, it basically becomes law then. Okay. And, and another issue that I should mention is that the Hopi tribe issued a press release. Um, last week, and they said that um, they weren't ready to approve it, that they wanted it to be taken before all of their members. So um, I'm not sure how that's going to impact the, the water settlement. I'm trying to get hold of the water rights attorney, Stanley Pollock, to find out. Do both tribes have to sign off on that settlement in order for it to be an effective settlement? Well, it would be for that portion of the water settlement that deals with the Navajo Aquifer. And what I'm thinking is that um, the rest of the settlement could go forward and that would be taken out there. Those are one of the things that the council asked, the um, uh, Stanley Pollock, was, you know, can there be changes, any changes be made to it? And he said... There little tweakings can be done, but not any major changes. And one of the things that people didn't seem to understand is that yes, it hasn't been funded yet. Right. The, the, but if Congress decides not to provide funding, then that null and voids the agreement. Also. I see. Well, <clears throat> with the Tea Party flexing their muscles, the question is whether there's going to be money for. Uh, a whole lot of things. Two related issues, perhaps. One, my understanding is the consul has voted to try to dispose of some of the judicial officials, and former President Peterson Zha says he's quitting his job at the university to come back home and help out because there's a lot of stress uh, on the Navajo Nation because of the recent election and some of the events that have occurred there. Yeah, um, on the um, story of the um, 
legislation that was approved to remove um, the Chief Justice permanent justice on the reservation. That um, is being reported by Noelle Smith and, and, and also um, in both working together and looking at that story. The um, Judiciary Committee was able to change the law in removing justices. Um, and these are, people, people have to understand, these are permanent um, judges and also the um, chief justice of the Supreme Court. And the process now is, it, it's opened the door for anyone, including um, elected officials, to file a complaint and then it goes to the Judiciary Committee and then it goes back to the council. And um, it's um, really watered down the, um, the law in removing a justice or a chief justice. And so people are looking th at this, and, and, and I guess they should, in that it's, they're retaliating against the um, Supreme Court for its decision in ordering that um, this past election be held for 24 delegates and not 88, which was going to happen. They were going to, again, go ahead and have an election for 88 and wait until four more years before they had the, 20, the election for 24. Okay, that's certainly the appearance. And uh, Peterson Zaz made this announcement that he's resigning from the University of uh, Arizona, is it? Where he's at? Yeah, no, no, it, 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 um, Arizona um, State University, ASU. Okay. And um, in fact, he, was, um, he came over because he wanted to read the story that we had written about his resignation, him and his wife. And um, it, it was a tough decision for him. Um, because he he really he's been one individual that I have known um, I think since high school that has always tried to provide programs that create leader, leadership among the youth and um, he um, is um, yeah he, he he would rather have stayed at at, at a, he he is he is an individual who's very much respected. And I think that um, perhaps um, he would be looked at as a person who might be able to be the mediator in what's going on and step forward. Because it was under his administration that the judicial branch was actually created. Okay. So hopefully he's going to lend his hand at trying to bridge uh, some of these issues to help heal the nation, help bring it back together in some kind of a unified voice? Yeah, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing that he would bring back, I think, is like with, um, as um, journalists, as um, photographers, going to journal, just any field of journalism, we retain that memory of what happens and bring it from the uh, back, bring it from the past forward to remind people, well, this um, to be that um, that uh, mechanism to help the people remember, because so much has happened to the people in trying to wipe out the memory bank, yeah. and this is where he would come in and say, this is why the judicial branch was created. This is the benefit of the judicial branch, and these this is what could happen. This is allowed to happen, right? And and not sit oh, we there. Have... He's not an individual who is able to, you know, he's not taking sides. Okay, we had a little breakup of your audio there, but we're back on better. The Navajo Nation had some land put in trust for a casino. Is that uh, some good positive news from your region? Well, um, for um, as far as casinos, it's. It's a, um, a pretty tricky issue because right now the tribe is on a continuing resolution, um, the budget, 2010, bu 2010 budget. And they did that because over the issue of the 2011 budget and the laws that are in place, and the law that is in place now says the legislative branch has to receive a budget for 88 delegates, but now you have 24. And everybody is 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 um, trying to figure out a way that the twenty four can be seated because the current law says that the 
Navajo Nation Council quorum is 45, but you have 24. And then the Supreme Court decision um, to order the 88 member council, we don't want you interfering in the 24. So you guys just stay away from it and allow the 24 to be seated. But it's like, if we do that, though, they can't be seated. We're the only ones that can amend those laws. So how is it going to be done? They can be and, they can be seated, but they might, might might not have enough people to do business. The it, law it, says that forty five have to be sitting there to do business. And, and yeah, and then when you get back to this issue of the casinos and um, the financial issues that are are um, surrounding um, issuing a or, or establishing a casino, all of that goes back to the annual budget and the appropriation of funds for economic development. And, and that's where right now um, you have a lot of the current elected officials saying, we need to go back to the Supreme Court to ask them to reconsider their opinion to allow us to at least open the door for the 24 to come in and sit down, adopt the budget, and then we can start moving on some of these economic development projects like the casino. And these casinos are actually... Sm very small casinos and that are happening in in the community and they're right within the community and right. the community has told the central government instead of all of the money um being funneled off to central government we want to keep some of it here and and that should only be fair you know yeah, it's, it's that's true. Their well it's a good debate uh, something out of the blue uh you had Navajo Nation had members of the American Indian Movement. There's a trial coming up in South Dakota of John Graham for the alleged murder of Anime Pictou Aquash. Do you have any, in the half a minute we got left, you got any thoughts about whether that represents justice for Native women or for that whole issue? It does represent um, justice for Native women. I think that um, more and more that Native women... Um, it's almost like we're Native women have been given a lot of lip service. Um, well, women are the backbone of the nations. Um, the, uh, when the hearts of the women are on the ground, the nation will fall. And, and you have all of these cliches, but no one that is actually walking the talk. And you look across the board at Indian nations, and you have so many single women, uh, single heads of households. And they are women. And, and then when women begin to move forward, then they're held back by traditional, almost traditional stories in a sense. But it's up to interpretation, like with, with what happened with the, the past presidential candidate, Linda Lovejoy. Right. The whole issue there that had been brought up was about whether a woman should be a leader. But it goes back to, it, it's, it's, there needs to be a, a better... Um, understanding of um, women and that um, there is not this issue over um, when women have Native women have um, never said they want to be above Native men that's that's not what it's about that both should walk together and, and continue life okay. and when you talk about continuing life life means that and and with with Annie May, she was an individual who was who was ahead of her time. Who talked about educating children, who was not talking about really women's rights, but was speaking out for family, for children, and in that recognizing that men and women had to work together, and recognizing that. Whoever saw anything that was wrong needed to speak out, and she spoke out. She didn't say, oh, I need to go have a man do this. She stood up and she spoke out, and and she was that lone voice at that time when the American Indian movement was very, very strong. And people need to look at the role of Native women in the American Indian movement. Okay. Where can we go for some of the news stories the Navajo Times is carrying? Oh, go to Navajo Times. Dot com and uh, hopefully if you're well if you're in Phoenix and Albuquerque you can go down and, and find a place to buy it. Thanks for joining with us again, Marley. You take care. Thank you.